Hello everyone and welcome back to another day of Road to VGC World 2016 where we are using my team that got me over 300 championship points. Um, this team alone um, qualified me to Worlds in a combination of three tournaments so I've been doing pretty well with it. Um, if you guys are newcomers from Bit Cultures, welcome. I did get two wins on Tuesday's video so hopefully you learned something useful from that and uh, in yesterday's Spanish video I won the first game pretty decisively and the second game I lost because I faced off against a cross poison crowbat <laughs> I, I never expected that and he also predicted me like he predicted my incoming Smirgle switch in with taunt and something like that it was like it was something ridiculous and um, in the end, he won the speed tie, which I needed to win. That's what happened. So, oh, yeah. Um, that's why we have three wins and one losses. And one loss, sorry. Um, I alternate the videos between, like, recording the videos between English and Spanish. So, if you want to follow all the week, you can check out the Spanish videos. I mean, the way I narrate is obviously in Spanish, but... Whatever happens in the game, uh, I have my game set to English, so you shouldn't have an issue at least understanding what goes on in the battle. I just took a picture of my opponent's team, and let's see here. Kangaskhan H slash Clef Key, which is probably going to be very annoying, but I really don't like the look of that H slash. Um... But I also don't like the Kangaskhan. I do like Mobile a lot though. I really do like Mobile. So perhaps I'm gonna lead Mobile. Seems pretty good against everything he has. And I'm gonna lead Eveltal as well. And I'm gonna have my trusty Smirgle and my trusty Cernias in the back. Because I feel like he has so many counters. Well, not so many, but Aegis Lash, Talonflame, and Klefki seem like counters for Cernias. So, it seems like he's gonna try to counter Cernias, so I might as well try to counter the Cernias counters. And yeah, there's Aegis Lash and Klefki. That's 100% an anti-Cernias lead. 100% an anti-Cernias lead. So, nobody really expects Heatwave from my... <clears throat> from my... thingy. <laughs> From my Veltal. And I'm guessing Aegislash is going to protect itself this turn because it's or switch out because it's really threatened by my by my Veltal. But that Clefty Clef key could prove really annoying because of the fact that um, he can Thunder Wave. So I'm gonna go for a heat wave and an iron head. Hopefully that will be enough to to KO the Clef Key. He's actually not gonna switch out the Aegis Lash, so I'm hoping he will protect it and go for some sort of Thunder Wave. Yeah, there's the King Shield. So, not not bad. Um, something will most likely get paralyzed. Yeah, there's the Thunder Wave. But as long as we don't get fully paralyzed, I'll be okay with this because Mobile is already pretty slow. Um, it's not gonna be outspeeding anything really. And the Iron Head at that range should be enough, especially with the burn damage. And yeah, Mobile doesn't get paralyzed. So we get a turn 1 KO at the exchange of, of a 20. My opponent trades his Clef Key for a 25% chance to. to. 25% chance to. Ah, I cannot speak today, sorry. 25% chance to make my mobile not attack because of the fact that now I'm gonna be even slower than H slash, meaning I might catch it in in attack form, in blade form instead of shield form. So he could potentially have white guard, but at this point I really don't think so. So I might I mean, a Sugger Punch boosted by Dark Aura is definitely gonna hurt, and so will the Snarl. And the Snarl might make it so my mobile leaves the turn. He does have the White Guard though. 
he does have the white card. And Mobile is fully paralyzed, so this turn is going to be really bad for us. Goes for the Origin Pulse. Um, I get very lucky in that my Eveltal avoids it. I get really lucky there, and my Mobile is 100% TV'd to survive the, the Origin Pulses from a Max Special Attacks Modest Natured Primal Kyogre. So I was pretty sure that bearing a crit, I would survive. Now, there's a few things I can do here. I could predict the Protect on Kyogre, I could predict the fact that he's not gonna white card again. But I think going for the Sucker Punch onto Kyogre and Aegislash is not really threatening me now, is it? So maybe doubling up onto Kyogre is a better play. Hopefully we see another white card. No second white card. But that Sucker Punch and the Dark Pulse are definitely going to hurt. And I have the flinch chance onto Kyogre. He goes for the Ice Beam. So um, I am Assault Vest. That doesn't do 50%. His stance changes with Aegis Slash. And he's probably going to KO the Mowile right now. Yeah, he does KO the Mowile. So if he has Palkia in the back, we are still pretty okay. Because of the fact that um, I pretty much get a free, get a free, how do you call it? Get a free Geomancy here, unless that's Focus Slash, Age Slash. Would you run Focus Slash, Age Slash? Would you, man? Would you? So is it safer to go for a Dazzling Gleam and a Dark Pulse? Is it safer? Just to cover our bases. I think it is worth it. Oh, but if he white guards... I have a f I, I don't know. Something tells me that Age Slash is... Is Focus Slash. Kyogre protects. Does he King Shield? He doesn't King Shield. So, no matter what, Aegislash is going down. But the fact that he did not protect Aegislash this turn, I'm pretty sure that means he was Focus Slash Aegislash. Um, although Focus Slash Aegislash usually doesn't run White Guard and King Shield. But I had to do that to just be 100% sure. Palkia is his last Pokemon. Um, Cernias now covers both of them pretty well. He no longer has the cover of of white guard and both are special attackers so a combination of dazzling gleam and snarl should pretty much seal this game for me at this point yeah there's a forfeit so i open and knew that between snarl and uh, dazzling gleam it would be enough if i had not made the prediction of the focus ash which we don't know but it looked like it had the focus ash if i had not made that prediction then Aegislash would have probably knocked out my Cernias as I had gone for a Geomancy. Like, if I had known, if I had information that the Aegislash wasn't, um, wasn't Focus Ash, then I was very, very free to simply, to simply Dark Pulse and Geomancy up. But the fact that I had not seen the item, pretty much to guarantee 100% the win and expecting Palkia to be in the back, um, it was necessary for me to double target the the Age Slash. So now we're up against a Kirim White Mega Rayquaza team with Superior. So I think we can pretty much um, assume he's not gonna bring Superior because of the fact that I have no Kyogre. And Mowile does pretty well against him as well. Kangas can dust too though. The problem is that Thunderous. Thunderous is always a problem. I do think he's gonna bring Talonflame. I do think he's gonna bring Sherothorn. So I think my lead here is Kangaskhan Evelta. 
with Cernias and Smirgle in the back because um, his team is pretty weak to Cernias. Um, aside from, well, his two restricted Pokemon are weak to Cernias, so he's definitely going to want to counter Cernias with Ferrothorn and potentially by paralyzing with Thunderous or by priority with Talonflame. So, there's Thunderous and Talonflame. This might mean he didn't bring Ferrothorn, but at this point, okay, there's some mind games going on here because Talonflame can quick card my fake out, he can paralyze my Kangaskhan, which would be problematic. He could also paralyze my Veltal, or he could double up on the Veltal, or he could set up Tailwind, I mean, and protect. There's so many variants. I mean, what puts me in the best spot here? Or in the worst spot, actually? I think I'm going to double edge the Talon Flame. Or, no, I think. Okay. I'm more scared of the Thunderous, so I'm going to double up. No, I'm gonna use Snarl. Snarl should be enough to finish it up. I'm hoping. <laughs> but yeah, very, very scary turn one, and very good leads for my opponent. There's a break for it, so yeah, my opponent just went straight out for the attack. I think I'm going to lose either Eveltal or a Kangaskhan. That damage though means it's not life orb. Thunders might be life orb. No. So this might be a pretty important turn. If I manage to KO Thunders right now, I'll be sitting really nicely, honestly. With Cernias in the back. Oh wow, so that was a clean KO. So that definitely worked out in my favor I think. I traded my Kangaskhan for um, Thunderous, no paralysis, no things like that. Now, the question is, what is he going to bring? I think Cernias is my safe play here. Um, I should outspeed Kyurem, unless it's Scarfed. I should outspeed Rayquaza. He does bring in the Kyurem. He does bring the Kyurem. So, 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 so. Talonflame is not life work. That's good. Do I go directly for the Dazzling Gleam? Or do I protect? Or do I set up my Geomans? Is he a choice card? They usually are. They usually are choice cards. He could go for Blizzard, but I don't think a combination of Blizzard and Brave Bird would KO either of my Pokemon. But I'm gonna go on the offensive. I'm gonna go with a Dazzling Gleam and I'm gonna go for a Snarl because worst case scenario, I weaken the... the Curum. My opponent decides to set up a Tailwind. He's not Choice Scarfed. So I might score a double KO here right now. Okay, he goes for the Ice Beam. He's not gonna KO Eveltal because I do have a Nostalt Vest. Wow, 3 HP. 3 HP, that Assault Vest really, really coming through. And now, he has 4 turns of Tailwind, but I have 3 Pokemon left, and one of them is my Support Smeargle. Rayquaza, no, Superior, okay. Um, he, he doesn't have a double targeting move. So... Wow, Serpier, that's like the last Pokemon I would have... Like, that was the first thing I assumed he would not bring. So, I'm going to Geomancy to counter his probable Leaf Storm increase. And now, I cannot Snarl because I will raise his special attack. So, I'm gonna click Heat Wave because single target, super effective Heat Wave might do more than... Then how do you call it? Than a dark pulse, than a dark aura boosted dark pulse. But he decides to go after 
after Veltal, which I'm perfectly fine with. Because Smirgle gets a free switch in, my Cernias now has plus two special attack. And with the extra special defense, I nullify any boosts that Superior gets. And I can just follow me, and even if it's Focus Ash, um, Smirgle also is Focus Ash. He doesn't have a double, atar double target attacking move, at least not on the special side. He might know Earthquake or Rock Slide or something. But okay, I'm gonna pro double protect first, just to see what he goes for, to scout out, to play too, uh, really, really safe, and to, to waste a turn of Tailwind, because this is the third turn, so he's only gonna have one left. Um, he wow, mirror coat. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, you cheeky, cheeky, cheeky. Wow, that's gotta be focus ash mirror coat. So I'm gonna protect again. Wow, mirror coat, and that's focus ash. And follow me will not redirect the mirror coat. Follow me will not redirect the mirror coat. Wow. So he's focus ash. He's a hundred percent focus ash. I mean does he go for it again? He has to. Will the follow me redirect the mirror coat? Obviously not, right? Okay, he goes for Leaf Storm. That's fine. That is fine because Tailwind will run out and even if he's Focus Ash, he can no longer Mirror Coat. So yeah, that was really... Yeah, he's Focus Ash. Wow, that was so, so scary. I'm really, really glad I went for that double, double Protect on the first turn. Um, his Tailwind has now run out. Has it? Um, I didn't see the message. He used Tailwind and got KO'd. Next turn, he used Leaf Storm. Next turn, he used Mirror Coat. And this last turn, he used Leaf Storm. So that's Tailwind turns up. That is Tailwind turns up, right? So I'm gonna Moonblast and I'm going to follow me once again, just in case. But yeah, even a one turn, a one HP, uh, <laughs> whatever. There was no way I was losing. Like, I was worried about getting out speed, but he was not gonna KO me. Unless he got a crit, but then a follow me solves that. And yeah, two wins for today. Um, pretty glad, I think. I think today's video is really good because of the fact that we played assuming worst case scenarios. The Aegis Lash example, and right now the Serpier example. You have both battles where Based on the information you do not have, you have to make diff uh, different decisions. So I honestly didn't know Serpier knew, could have potentially had Mirror Coat, but um, the Double Protect was a safe move to scout out what he was planning on doing and also to waste a Tailwind turn. So the fact that we got information out of it was simply amazing. And I guess I got greedy a bit with the with the Geomancy and the fact that I didn't go for Sucker Punch against Trapeer, that would have solved all and every issue because you would have broken the Focus Ash. But the Aegis Lash example I think is the best example of how you really have to plan for the worst. Because if I had not um, played for a Focus Ash Aegis Slash, then I might have lost the battle right there. But because I did, and because of the way the battle played out, I would put money on the fact that that Aegis Slash had Focus Slash, and that turn, and the way we thought about every single possible scenario, well, not every single possible scenario, but like the worst possible scenarios, make it, like that's the difference between a really good player and a great player. The fact that you can go through all that with the time pressure of 45 seconds, and like, uh, not letting the pressure of tournaments and I don't know playing in battle spot like relaxed at your house is really different from playing in a tournament I get uh, like a lot more nervous in tournaments so yeah it's, it's it's little things like that that make a difference when everything else like 
IVs, EVs, world trained Pokemon, world trained teams, etc., are like on the same level. It's little things like that that win tournaments. And I guess a bit, a bit of luck. <laughs> so, yeah, that will be all for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you tomorrow on Friday for the last day of this week of Road to VGC Worlds 2016 in Spanish. Thank you guys very much, and see you next time. Bye bye.